No weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. It's difficult having enemies, especially when you're having enemies for trying to do things that are right. And this week's message, we're going to be talking about how to overcome your enemies. Hello and God bless. My name is Neville Solomon and welcome to Silo Ministries Television. I'm so happy to have you. If you're new here, I'm glad that you have spent the time to just visit us. And if you're a part of our community, welcome and I'm happy to have you here once again. In today's message, we're going to be talking about how to overcome your enemies. How to overcome your enemies. We're going to be looking at 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. But as you're um, preparing yourself to maybe take some notes or to um, get your Bible out and to read, I just wanted to say thank you so much for being here. And I'm really believing that this message is going to be helpful because there's so much going on in the world. So much challenge and so much tension. And um, perhaps you're in conflict with no one on a physical level, but definitely you're in conflict with darkness. Um, and then on the other hand, if you are in conflict with somebody, it's challenging sometimes because because you want to be you know, peaceful. You don't want to be in arguments with people. But I hope that this message will be able to help you to overcome as it relates to dealing with enemies. So we're going to be reading from 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. I'm reading from the King James Version. It says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There are three basic things that you need to know to help you to overcome um, your enemies. The first thing you need to know is you need to know who your enemy is. And this particular scripture uses um, this concept of the world or the cosmos. It's not talking about the earth or talking about people in general. It's talking about the world system. There's a system in this world that whether you have good people or bad people, um, whether you have you know, people that are really educated, or people that are uneducated, whether you have people with money or no money, overall there is a system in this world that is dark, that is not caring, that is negative. Um, I believe that behind that system are negative spirits, whether you call it the devil, Satan, adversary, enemy, Beelzebub, whatever name you want to call it. But um, along with having a system with, with darkness as it relates to spirits, there's also darkness as it relates to people. Whether that darkness is ignorance or that darkness is um, you know, willful evil, there are people that are oftentimes in the positions of authority or positions of power um, who, who use that power to harm. And when I'm talking about enemies, I'm not talking about talking about, you know, you disagree on a particular concept. I'm talking about people who use their influence or their power to harm, whether that's friendship or that's something much higher on a political level. But at the end of the day, I want to talk to you about how to overcome your enemy. So, so to overcome your enemy, you have to know who your enemy is, and your enemy is the world. The world is filled with false prophets. It's filled with lies darkness um the world is filled with antichrist the antichrist is to be against jesus or to be against christ to be against christ's purpose so the world is against your purpose it's against god's purpose the world is against your relationship with god and your relationship with other people the world is against your very existence the world system the world system all it cares about is empowering darkness so in order to overcome the enemy, you have to understand that there is a system out there that is intrinsically evil. If you're unaware of the system, then you can be harmed many times. You can feel the pain of it, but not understand the source of it. Are you feeling tired? So many people are feeling tired. So many people are feeling um, worn out. So many people are feeling depressed, angry, overwhelmed. So many people are feeling much more darker feelings. And, and you may think it's because of the current situation you're living in. You may think it's because of financial uh, problems or whatever that might be. But a lot of people are going through the same situation or having the same financial problems. And yet there's still a joy on the inside. There's still a peace on the inside. The more you're aware that there's an enemy 
and you begin to guard yourself against that enemy is the more empowered you live your life. So number one in, in overcoming your enemy, how to overcome your enemy is to know who your enemy is. Your enemy is the devil. Your enemy is darkness. Your enemy is ignorance. You see, all racism is, is darkness put within the system of the world. Because why would you hate somebody else who has done nothing to you? Why would you hate somebody else who has never um, hurt you? Why would you hate somebody else who actually benefits you? The only reason why you do that is because darkness and evil is on the inside of you. So it's very important for us to understand that we live in a world of darkness. I remember one time I was in a presentation. I'm not going to go into the details of it, but it was talking about crime. I was talking about how crime was handed down from father to son through generations. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, I have a son. And I'm happy I'm not a criminal. But if I was a criminal, I would want him to not be involved in that kind of lifestyle. I want him to have a better life than what I had. But it's because I'm free of the control of a dark spirit. Because when you're under the control of darkness, all you can give your children is darkness. So it's very important for us to fight against the world system, to fight against darkness. But secondarily, uh, as it relates to overcoming the world, we have to understand who we are. It's very important to understand who the enemy is, but we also have to understand who we are. The scripture says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. So who am I? I belong to God. I am a child of God. I'm a son of God. I'm important to God. God has adopted me. He's brought me into his family. He calls me friend. So because I belong to him and I'm important to him, because he has chosen me and I have chosen him, I am a person of value. If you have chosen God and you have um been chosen by him, you are a person of value. You can allow the world system to make you feel like you're not valuable. The money you make is not what makes you valuable. The thing that makes you valuable is that you were created in the image and the likeness of God, and you're aware of that. Earlier in the scripture, it was talking about that if a person does not confess or acknowledge that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, they are not of God. Sometimes we read that scripture and we read it very simply and we don't really get the depth of it. Is that it's not just simply saying that I say that God is human or that God is historical, that I confirm the historical Jesus. It's not just that. It's about confessing, acknowledging, recognizing had Jesus never come to the earth and been a man, I would have never been saved. I attach my salvation. I attach my freedom. I attach my ability to overcome the enemy to the fact that Jesus was on the earth. It's very, it's very important. It's very important for me to recognize that he um, understands the pain that I've been through. He understands that I was a sinner, but now through him, I'm a new creature. You see, when we can understand that we belong to God, that we're important to God, then we see that there's a certain facet of who we are that has great significance. So if I have an enemy, I should not be fearful of that enemy because I have a God who's protecting me. And if the enemy dares to touch me, he's not just touching me, he's touching God because anything that belongs to God, God will protect so because you're important to God, God will protect you. But the scripture goes on to say, um, not only are you of God, little children, have overcome them. It says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So not only does God protect you because you belong to him, but God lives in you because you are his temple. And the power that is in you, which is the Holy Spirit, the power that is in you, which is the word of truth, the power that is in you, which is the light of the world, the power that is in you, which is the salt of the world, the power that is in you, which is the love of God, 
that power itself has so much authority. It has so much, um, it, it has so much force that that power causes you to overcome the world. So not only do I overcome the world because I belong to God and God is protecting me, I overcome the world because God has deposited in me a gift of power. And that gift of power is able to transform my life, but it's also able to work through me to transform the lives of other people. So when I have the correct identity, I know that I'm empowered by my identity in God, then I'm able to overcome my enemies. How can I be depressed when I know who I am? The enemy is telling me that you, you're no good, but I know who I am. So what you say is not the truth. The enemy is telling you that you'll never make it, but I know who I am. I belong to God I'm, and I'm going to make it. So the devil, you're a liar. The devil is trying to show you all of your shortcomings, your past problems. The devil, I know that you're a deceiver. And because I know that you're a deceiver and I know that I am the beloved of God, I will not be shaken. I will not fear because I know who I am. I'm important. You see, when you understand who you are and you understand that you are very important, then you go through the scriptures and you begin to get a revelation of who you are. You will be in power because you will recognize that I am the sheep of God and God is my shepherd and he's going to protect me. That I am vitally important to God and God has put something in me that is so powerful. Um... 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You see, God has put in us the power of God, but he's also given to us the gift of faith. And our faith causes us to overcome the world because I believe in God and I believe in myself. Someone said, you believe in yourself? I got it from Paul. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me. He didn't say that Christ can do all things. He said, I, in partnership with Christ, can do all things because he believed in himself and he believed in God. You have to believe in yourself. And you have to believe in God because God is a miracle worker. So once I know who my enemy is and I know who I am, I also need to know who God is. That God is faithful. That God is just. That God is righteous. That God is not in a competition with Satan. That God has all power and there's no power that can rival him. When I, when I begin to get a clearer concept of who God is, God is the light. And in him it is no darkness. So God is able to put light on the inside of me and to remove my darkness to cause me to overcome the darkness of my enemy. God is love. And because God is love, God has given me access to power that can free me from fear. For there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear has torment. He that feareth has not been made perfect in love. You see, when you have love, it can push out fear. And when you push out fear, you push out the enemy and you overcome the world. See, all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You see, there's a world system that can control us on the inside. But when you allow the light of God to shine on the inside of you, you are set free of your flesh. You're set free of your lust. You're set free of your pride. And you're able to be who God intended you to be. A child of God who takes authority and dominion in the name of God. So in, order, so in order for me to overcome the world, I first and foremost must know who my enemy is. I must know who I am. And the foundation of my life is to know who God is. So even if I fail, God, I believe in you. Even if I feel like I can't make it, God, I believe in you because I know that you are faithful. You are so faithful. You are so faithful. I belong to God, and you belong to God. And because we belong to God, we have to get to the place where we just 
walk in faith. Many Christians, and many, and many people for that matter, are more fearful of deception than they are faithful to believe that God is able to keep them. We talk more about how the devil is stolen this and the devil is doing that and the devil is doing this and the devil is doing that. And we miss the fact that God is holding our hands, that we are led by the Spirit. That we, if we resist the devil, he'll flee. If we draw nigh unto God, he'll draw nigh unto us. And if we submit ourselves to God, God will work in our life. God is perpetually working good things in our life. He's our shepherd. He's the one that leads us and guides us. We are the sons of God. And God is guiding us on a daily basis and he's bringing us to higher heights and deeper depths. But we need to change our focus and to recognize because God, you're king, we want you to open up our mindset to understand that we are a royal priesthood. We're a holy nation. We're a peculiar people. We are a light that shines before men. That we are the salt of the earth. That we have value. And because I have this value and because you have this value, we need to get to the place where we challenge ourselves to not be fearful of deception, but to be uh, faithful in our belief that God is able to work in our life. So many people are trying not to get deceived. And this Bible is so so clear in, in, in John chapter 4. It says that, um, false prophets will arise. But God has given us the power to test those spirits. You see, when you know who you're supposed to be and you know who you are and you know who God is, when you see a counterfeit, it becomes easy to recognize. But when you don't know your Bible and you don't know God, all you can do is try to figure out what's right and wrong by what other people tell you. Let's spend time with God. Let's get close to God. Let the word of God speak to your heart so that you can overcome the world. How can I overcome the world? Know who the world is. The world is a system that's my enemy. That's the enemy of God. Number two, know who I am. I am adopted. I am brought into the household of God. I belong to God. And because I belong to him, he has put a gift on the inside of me. And that gift on the inside of me is the power of truth. It's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is activated by the gift of faith that he's given to me to believe in him. Not to believe that the devil's going to deceive me. Oh, the devil's going to get me. The devil's going to get me. Always talking about negative things and talking about the enemy. Talk about God. Talk faith. Believe that God is able to work in your life. And the third and most important aspect of how to overcome your enemy is to believe God and to know who God is. And to recognize that... Everything in life is founded upon God. When I have those three things in place, I begin to love God and lose my fear for the enemy. And when you have lost your fear for the enemy, you have overcome the enemy. There's no weapon that's formed against you that can prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him. The battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Exodus 23 verse 22, it says, If you listen carefully to what he says and do all that he says, he will make your enemies his enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. God is on our side. And he's calling us to know him and to believe him and to build a system of light in the cosmos and the world of darkness so that the world will know that love is available and that we are able to overcome our enemies by the power of God's love. God bless you.